Okay, so I'll get into this and we'll probably take care of what we need in the lecture notes and then we'll go to that handout from there on. Okay, so terminology or anatomy you have to remember. Gonads are gonads. It doesn't matter if you're talking female or male. The gonad is the reproductive sex organ. The penis and the vagina are not the reproductive sex organs. They're just accessory organs, technically. The thing that makes the gamete, which is your reproductive cell, is the sex organ. So in a woman, what's the reproductive sex organ? It's the ovary. In a man, it's the testis. I know we're raised talking about junk downstairs and stuff, but the actual reproductive organ is the gonad. All right, so the gametes are either going to be the spermatozoa, which obviously is what? Sperm. And then the ova, which is the egg. The other job of the, the sex hormones are to release the sex hormones. When you're releasing sperm, what's the sex hormone that goes hand in hand with sperm? Testosterone. What are the two hormones that go hand in hand with the ova? Estrogen and progesterone. Yep. So those are made by the actual gonads. Testosterone by the testes, right? Estrogens from the ova or ova, ovaries, and so is progesterone. All right, so the gonads, again, is the actual reproductive organ. Reproductive tract is the pathway that delivers the reproductive cell, sperm or egg, to its destination. And the accessory sex glands are anything that help deliver it. Right, so here's the picture, and the way I always remembered it, and I don't know how you learned it in anatomy, um, if you had Jenna, I used to teach the sex section. I don't know if it was because she always felt uncomfortable teaching it or if I just, I'm awesome at teaching this section or something. I don't know what it is. But the way I always teach anatomy is wherever the sex organ is, follow the pathway. So you start down here at the testis that makes the what? Sperm. Yep, releases it up here into the epididymis goes into the vas deferens, goes up and over the bladder, comes back down into this little walnut-sized prostate, which women don't have, thank you. And then it meets up with the ejaculatory duct, which is combined. So you have this pathway that's coming from the vas deferens, and you have this pathway that's coming from the bladder, so it's one common pathway. Man, um, I used to help teach a class, sex and reproduction at Iowa State, and the guy that I taught with, he was like, men are just filthy. We're just dirty animals because we use this one structure for both urination and reproduction where women are so much cleaner because they have two separate pathways. Eh. I think he was right about the men are dirty part. Anyway, moving on. So this pathway coming along, then you have the urethra, but you have these structures here like the prostate, the bulbourethral glands, the seminiferous tubules. Seminiferous tubules. Why do I say that? Um, crap. I'm having a total brain fart. Not the seminiferous tubules, that's in the testis. Uh, seminal vesicles. Whew! Pull that one off. Whoa. Oh, it's right there. I was like, it's not on here. I'm panicking, reading every word, and I stopped before I got to it. Anyway, all these are accessory glands. They help lubricate, they help add, st add structures to the sperm, like lubricant for the sperm. They actually produce the semen. Right. And then down through the urethra, the pathway leading through the uh, glands, penis, and out of the body. Just remember the pathway. And when we come back and talk about this, I'll show you a way to memorize the pathway again. It's very similar when you're talking about a woman. In fact, our structures, before we're two weeks old, the structures for reproduction are actually the same in both boys and girls. So it's after about two weeks when testosterone comes out that it starts developing more masculine features. And if there is no testosterone, it starts developing more feminine features. And then there's just the... Um, frontal plane view. And the female parts, and I'm going to go to the next view. There we go. So if you remember the gonad itself drops an egg out into the abdominal cavity. It doesn't drop the egg directly in. It drops in the abdominal cavity. Then these fimbriae start going like little fingers trying to pull the egg in. They're creating a current pulling the egg up and into the oviduct or the fallopian tube. And then once it gets in here, you've got all these little cilia that help carry the egg. Every time I think of the cilia up here, I loved Pearl Jam back in the early 90s, and I always remember Eddie Vedder crowd surfing. And these little cilia, they do that. They grab the egg. The egg can't swim, so they like crowd surf the egg all the way down. So they take the egg and they just pull it along until it meets up with the sperm. And what's interesting is that the sperm being crowd surfed the other way, so they're floating along until they hit each other. It's kind of cool. I animorph things way too much. 
Anyway, so the ciliary lining here, and then it pulls it all the way down to the ampulla, dumps it into the uterus, and ideally, if it's fertilized, there's where implantation is. Otherwise, if it's not fertilized, it just keeps working its way down until menstruation happens, and it's pushed out through the cervix, into the vaginal canal, and then out of the body. Follow the, the gamete, the reproductive cell, and its pathway out. And then you just know all the structures, and then as we go through the physiology, everything will be a lot more clear that way. We'll talk about how the gametes develop inside of the gonads. We'll talk about how they move downstream. And then before we go on, we'll talk a little bit about secondary sex characteristics. So first, let's talk about the gamete. Gametes are called haploid cells. H-A-P-L-O-I-D. Haploid. Haploid means it has one set of chromosomes. It has 23 chromosomes in it. Haploid. One set of chromosomes. That's 23 chromosomes. Numbers 1 through 22, when they do this, they, they call it a karyotype. And they split apart a cell. They line them all up, all the chromosomes. They line them up by size. So the biggest one's number 1, going all the way down to number 22, which is the smallest. And then that last one is the weird one, because men and women have different ones. So they just call those the sex chromosomes. Number 23 is the sex chromosome. In a haploid cell, you only get one. You either get an X or a Y. If it's an egg, is it going to be an X or a Y? In an egg, it is always an X. In a, in a sperm, 50% of them are X's, 50% are Y's. Who decides what sex the baby is? Dad. Yep. Dad. That's the only thing I really do. So. But the Y chromosome, they think was bigger at one time, but evolution has trimmed it back and trimmed it back and trimmed it back. So that really, there are only about 13 genes that even matter on there. But there's one specific gene you have to know. It's called the SRY gene. SRY. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Yeah, the sorry gene. Because that sorry gene is what makes you a man. The SRY gene is what turns on testosterone production and makes you a man. If you're missing that one gene, you're a woman. By default, if you're missing that Y chromosome, guess what you become? A woman. You have both equipment for being male or female for the first two weeks, and it's that one gene right around day 10 to 14, that gene flips on if you have it, and it starts producing testosterone, and that's the trigger to masculinize the fetus. Right. So this, when you see two X's or an X and a Y, this is not the haploid cell. This is called a diploid cell. So a diploid cell, all of the other cells in your body, except the gamete, have two sets of chromosomes. So they actually have 46 chromosomes. All the diploids have two of every chromosome. So there are two number ones, two number twos, two sex chromosomes, all of them. If it's an X and a Y, because of that Y, having that SRY gene, you know it's a boy. You can have, you can actually have these like flukes of nature where you can have an XXXY, guess what sex it is? It's a male. You can have an X, guess what sex it is? Female. If you can have an XX or an XXX, it doesn't matter. The Y is what determines it. Um, like, for instance, if you have XXY, it's called Kleinfelder syndrome. It's boys that hit puberty earlier and they sprout up really tall. So taller boys, but they have more feminine characteristics. They don't grow facial hair very well. Um, their testis and their gonad or the reproductive structures are all smaller. They usually have gynecomastia, which means they have kind of breast-like tissue. But they're a boy. They have male equipment. However, they have more estrogens than female characteristics. All right. And then gametogenesis is what's actually happening when you're making the gametes. Genesis means what? The creation of. So creation of gametes. And what happens is you have these germ cells. Germ cells is just another way of talking about stem cells. It's a stem cell, but the stem cell is only able to produce reproductive cells. And that stem cell will replicate and make another stem cell. And then that next stem cell will start changing and becoming whatever the structure is supposed to be. So it's supposed to be a sperm. It reproduces. It makes that pre-sperm. 
and then it keeps developing, developing, and developing until it splits the chromosomes to the appropriate number. So you have a sperm cell that has what? Diploid or haploid cells? Haploid. One set of chromosomes. Why is a sperm only one set of chromosomes? Because what's it have to find? It has to find an egg that has one set of chromosomes. They come together and what do they just form? A diploid. The first somatic cell, which is your first body cell. So here you can see how an X egg, do you get Y eggs? Never. Because mom is an XX and her cells split, her chromosomes split. So it doesn't matter if you take an X and put it this way, it's always going to be X on the other side too. And then they meet up with the Y sperm, which makes a what? A little boy. Yep. So when these two chemicals, or when these two sets of chromosomes bind and they turn on the SRY gene, the SRY gene about 10 to 14 days after conception will start releasing well, these protein structures, these hormones. What they're going to do is they're actually going to create something called Mullerian inhibiting substance. Mullerian, the word's right there. I don't know if that's in your notes. Is it in your notes? Mullerian inhibiting substance? You might want to jot it in. So anyway, MIS is Mullerian inhibiting substance. It stops a female producing substance. Mullerian ducts will become, well, the whole pathway will become the ovary, the fallopian tubes, and the uterus. That's what Mullerian ducts become. Testosterone from the SRY gene will stimulate a set of ducts called the Wolfian ducts. And the Wolfian ducts become the testis, the vas deferens, and the urethra. If you have a problem remembering Mullerian versus Wolfian, look at the names. A wolf is a canine, right? It's a form of a dog. One time I heard all men are dogs. Wolf, dogs, whatever. And that's how I always remember Wolfian ducts were for males. Mullerian ducts, females, Wolfian ducts, males. This Mullerian inhibiting substance shuts down. It turns off the female structures and actually makes them disintegrate. This fetus starts absorbing it. It starts eating the structures. So it can't become a female at that point. And then if it's two X's, the two X's, it doesn't make Mullerian inhibiting substance. So what it does is it makes the Mullerian ducts and this time, the wolfing ducts regress or degenerate. So I think this is the last slide. So about the first two weeks, if you have the SRY gene, then the wolfing ducts develop. If you don't have the SRY, the Mullerians by default develop and become a female. SRY gene, I already told you, increases testosterone, increases that Mullerian inhibiting substance to shut off the Mullerian system, and it turns up the Wolfian ducts. So. This is what it actually looks like when you're a fetus. You have both sets. If you have SRY gene, then that Mullerian set just goes away. The testes start binding to the actual duct work, and then you have testis, vas deferens, and then over here, if you don't have that, then this all just, all this degenerates and you have ovaries instead of testis. Right. And then when we come back, we'll start talking from this slide. Actually, this slide on is in the handout that I have on in the uh, folder online. It's a picture handout. If you print it back to back, it flips like a little book. Isn't it funner to talk about sex when you have pictures and a booklet form? Do you have to be over a certain age to buy that kind of book?